Well, I mean, you, you, you saw her presumably before this dressing down from Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Uh, I did. Um, we had to clarify, that dressing down from Lindsay Hoyle was just an hors d'oeuvre <laughs> from what she was getting from her backbenchers behind a furious Tory MP. So, to put the context here, Vanessa, this is all about some 4,800 different bits of EU law, which, of course, were British law, because we remember the EU, that we had to live and, uh, and, live and work and underbuy and everything else mm -hmm. for 50 or so years while we are members of the EU. The government last year, under Boris Johnson, said those 4,800 bits of legislation, we're going to get rid of a lot of them, and furthermore, we're going to do it by the end of 2023. So that had civil servants busily trying to uh, delete, delete, delete as much as they humanly possibly could. Mm -hmm. Then along came a brand-new Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, and he appointed a new business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, and she said, well, look, actually, some of those bits of law we might want to keep, environmental protections, workplace protections, maternity rights, that sort of thing. So despite the fact that it was made by the EU, Half the stuff was suggested by Britain, and we still kind of like this sort of stuff. However, that hasn't made the Brexiteers very happy, because on principle, they want this stuff gone, and maybe we can write our own, but on principle, all the stuff has to go. So they're furious with her for what they say is a massive U-turn, albeit on the last government's promise, although Rishi Sunak did actually say he would keep it too during his leadership campaign, so that's the, the politics. They have been throwing bricks at her. I've sat down with Kemi Bodoc. She is throwing bricks back tonight. We'll have the full interview on first session, but here's a little taste. Have a okay. listen. As you know, some of this delay, U-turn, whatever language mm. you, you want to use, change, practical change in government mm -hmm. policy has infuriated quite a few Tory MPs mm. on, on the right-wing party, Brexiteers. One of them said this to the Daily Telegraph, you need a tough minister, but Kemi is a lame minister <laughs> who's having rings run around her by Remainer officials. Yeah, I, I actually laughed out loud when, when, um, when I read that. There are a lot of people who talk but can't do. I went in there. I spent quite a few months going through the detail. I asked uh, uh, MPs who had been in that meeting what they wanted to remove, and they couldn't say anything. And I think that is uh, more illustrative of the problem we have, that there are too many people who spend a lot of time talking. I need to do the thinking and the doing. So, You're talking about Tory MPs um, who talk I, I'm but can't talking, do. Um, I'm talking, there are many people across Parliament in the media and in the commentariat who make a lot of noise, but they're not the ones who have to do the doing. I trust the officials I'm working with. I do feel that they need direction and guidance. And actually, we need to stop turning uh, the process of reform into one where we're laboriously trying to preserve uh, EU legislation, which is what's happening. What I've done is change the approach. And I think that it's the right thing uh, for the legislative programme that we have and for the country. Well, there you have it. You talk the talk, I have to walk the walk. Yeah. There are a lot of people who talk but can't do. These are her own Tory backbenchers she's referring to. And then she went on to say there are many people across Parliament, again, those Tory backbenchers, who make a lot of noise, but they're not the ones who have to do the doing. I honestly can't remember in 20 or so years of reporting on politics when a Conservative cabinet, or quite frankly, any frontbench cabinet minister was so withering, dismissive and rude to her backbenchers. It has to be said, they have been pretty rude back as well. Uh, and, and when she says do the doing, what doing is she doing? What's she talking about? What's she doing that they're not doing? So it is this business of going through those 4,800 bits of EU law yeah. and getting rid of them. She says you've got to go through it a little bit more slowly, you've got to work out which ones we actually might want to keep because they might be quite popular. You can't just press... Control Alt Delete. So, are we thing. meant seriously to believe that she sat down at various desks with a with a you know pen and quill and crossed out things and read every every kind of statute and chose which ones to leave and which ones not to leave? Are we really meant to think she's been doing that? Vanessa, that is precisely what yes. she's been doing for the last three months. I suspect she hasn't been sitting up late at night burning the middle like oil <laughs> in the Department for Business yeah, doing Pratchett each style. and every one of them. But mm -hmm. this is the challenge. So each and every one of her officials has had to go through this massive EU statute. Remember, uh, the amount of EU laws that we were living under was as high as Nelson's column, mm -hmm. was the analogy during the, the referendum campaign. So she has and her officials have gone through every single last bit of this. And the point that she would make is you just can't do all this in a year it might take a bit longer. Her very combative language is very interesting, Tom, isn't mm. it? Especially for someone who fancies herself as the next leader of the Conservative Party. Mm. She will be alienating a lot of people with this, won't she? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think that's the point. So, interestingly, Kemi Benoit was a Brexiteer, a fervent Brexiteer, campaigned for it. She was very much one of the candidates of the right on the party and is currently, well, until this morning anyway, was the bookie's favourite to overtake Rishi Sunak to, to be the next Tory leader. Obviously, this row mm -hmm. with her own Brexit backbenchers, what might be the, the, the base, if you like, has set 
those aspirations back a bit. Fun enough, we talk about that in a little bit, which we'll play later on on first session. But the politics of all this, Vanessa, pan back out. What is all this? What do the punters think of all this? This is the Tories banging on about Brexit again. We've had that quite a bit over the last decade. When we? she says, I do, and they talk, they talk too much, I do the doing and they don't do it, if they're Tory backbenchers, what kind of doing are they meant to be doing? They're not entitled to go through statute books and decide what remains and what doesn't remain. What does she feel that they're falling short on and she is delivering? Well, I think that was a jibe at uh, chap called Jacob Rees-Mogg. Ah, OK, I've heard of him, yeah, heard just of him. about. Yeah, just about. Uh, so he was the business secretary before her and it was his promise to do that. And I think her point is quite simply, look, you can come up with these grand plans, we're going to scrap all 4,800 bits of EU law, but actually when you go through the small print, it's a bit harder. And, and Peter, this idea of her taking a swipe at Jacob Rees-Mogg in this way, what's the point of it? Is that to make her seem authoritative and leadership candidate ready? Is that the idea? I think it probably she feels that it won't do her any harm anyway. And Jacob Rees-Mogg is very much a purist on a lot of these things and will have said at various times that all of this law should go. But as Tom correctly points out, there are various bits of it that could be quite useful, like a working time director, for example. Are we all going to work 100 hours a week or should we keep it below 48 hours a week? And a lot of it was, of course, suggested to the EU by many British uh, governments over the many years we were in the EU. So not all that law is bad, but clearly some of it is what Kemi Badenoch wants to get rid of. And I think her credentials as a Brexiteer are so good that she feels confident in this. So, Don, when you say it's very rare to hear a minister be quite so rude, quite so discourteous about the phalanx of people around her, but they are equally rude about her. You haven't been interviewing them exclusively, only her. So what do you mean? What sorts of things have they said? And did you fling them in her direction? Uh, I didn't because I sat down with her before she had this excruciating experience oh, in the House of Commons this morning. But there it was all played out on the floor of the House of Commons from 10.30 onwards this morning. They dragged her to the front bench, demand answers from her own people. Bill Cash, Sir Bill Cash, mm -hmm. who chairs the EU Scrutiny Committee, he was the one that demanded she come and uh, explain things to him. Marc Francois, who chairs the ERG, the European Research Group, it, he was the one throwing brickbats at her. What on earth are you doing, Secretary of State, he said at one stage. Now, she does make an argument for this. She says we have to do this methodically, and she had quite an interesting further dig at Jacob rees morgan into him. We can play that clip for you now. There is no delay, and well, there, there is, is on the original target, which was all of it. Well, I, well, I would dispute that. We found 4,000 pieces of EU legislation, and what we're doing is we're making them uh, the ones that we want to keep UK legislation. So in getting rid of EU legislation, we turn them into UK legislation. But during that process, we remove the ones that we don't think are necessary and we reform and improve the ones that we think can be reformed and improved. And I think it's one of those uh, things where you, know, you campaign in poetry and govern in prose. Actually, legislative uh, processes such as this are quite complicated and technical. You campaign in poetry, you govern in prose. There you have it. That is a dig at Jacob rees -Mogg, probably Boris Johnson too. It's all well and good to say it, but I'm the one who actually has to do it. That bit is a bit harder. I know, and, and, and so on a kind of human level, responding to her while interviewing her, mm. did you find yourself buoyed up on that wave of kind of, you might say confidence, you might say egomania, I really don't know what you might say, but did you respond to it favourably? Did you think that she certainly would make a great Tory leader or did you think this was uh, somebody enormously puffed up with a sense of their own importance? My egomania or hers? I, I would dream of mentioning that as a revered friend and colleague. I wouldn't you're, refer to it. Even if I'm kind. aware of it, I would never refer to it. <laughs> Certainly not on television, maybe in private. But you're tell kind. me <laughs> tell me whether you responded favourably, whether you thought, OK, this is great. Yeah. I find it, you know, this, this induces a sort of buoyant feeling of confidence in me too. She can definitely do the deed and get it done or whether you thought it was a whole load of hot yeah. air. So, so Kemi Bernard is a really interesting politician. I've known her ever since she got elected to Parliament. I mean, she's a fascinating backstory. Son of Nigerian migrants. She grew up in Nigeria, came here, worked at McDonald's, put herself through law school mm -hmm. and has worked all the way up into the cabinet so you know brilliant yes. fascinating backstory of aspiration she's also known as a straight talker she's got one of those things in her head or lack of things in her head that stops her from saying things that might get her into trouble it's why she's only ever given two interviews so far as business secretary she generally tries to stay away from the likes of us because she knows she has a habit of straight talking it's certainly going to cause some controversy with this interview playing out but it's also why Tories like her, and that's the interesting thing, Vanessa. She's got authenticity in it. She's not a robot. She won't just sit there and give you the lines to take. She'll tell it like it is, which is both a great skill and also potentially when she goes too far. And far be it for me to say she's gone through too far today because she mm. probably won't want to speak to me again if I did. But it's going to be an interesting one. 
And, and, and Peter, obviously, she knows what she's doing. Mm. She's, as, we, as we've just heard, her, her life story is quite remarkable. She's an inspirational person. She's very well aware of what she's saying and not saying. She's not being, you know, wafted off on a flight of fancy and she's not drunk. She's perfectly aware of what she's saying. So why does she choose? I mean, obviously, the skill of our colleague Tom is, 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 is a great part of it, but, but she knows how to rein herself in and not say anything that's going to get her into trouble or get, you know, contrary and, and, and critical headlines. So she's doing this on purpose. She's positioning herself in the place. Well, she does Why? give number 10 a bit of a headache because she isn't someone who sticks to the lines, as Tom said. She is someone who sometimes says things she shouldn't. But in terms of being a straight talker, absolutely right. And who, who was the other straight talker who just said what was in his head, who the Conservatives liked? Boris Johnson. Uh -huh. So I think that as someone who's a Brexiteer, as someone who does have oh. a, a public, is popular, is getting better known in the public as well, I think she will be looking to her leadership ambitions. And certainly as the person who slashed a lot of EU red tape, even if it's not all of the laws, that'll be something that she'll be very happy 